Good day, everybody. Welcome to today's video on my 2006 F-150. If you guys watched the previous video of the pilot series on theory on the IWE vacuum hub system on your Ford F-150 vehicles, I went over the theory and how the vacuum system operates. So in this video, I'm going to go over the solenoid switch, how to troubleshoot it, how to go about testing it to make sure it indeed works. So I'm going to use two tools for this video. One is a vacuum gauge and the other is my favorite troubleshooting tool, the power probe. Coming up here, we're going to test for vacuum before the switch. This is our vacuum switch here. I have pulled the vacuum line out of the way and I'm going to check for vacuum right here. You can inspect the line at the solenoid itself or you could pull it off the solenoid itself because basically if we don't have at least 10 inches of vacuum in here we're going to have issues so i want to check it at the check valve and make sure that the check valve is working if we don't have 10 inches vacuum at least then that means either this line is damaged and in that case we would probably have a check engine code uh saying that the um fuel trims are out and the engine's running lean and it's dumping more fuel in are the engine's in bad health hopefully it's not that so i'm going to pull this line off hook up my vacuum gauge we're going to start it up have a look be careful to pull that off so i can tell right there the check valve works because we kept vacuum in there and now i'm going to plug my gauge so when I start it up we're gonna be able to see how much vacuum there is so as you can see I'm running over 15 inches of vacuum so that's good that's lots of vacuum for the system so I verified that I'm gonna plug that back in we got good vacuum up to there very satisfied so now i got the assembly pulled out there's one more check valve here and i'm going to plug into right there right into that one Still got vacuum, so we know the vacuum lines are good going to the switch. So now I'm going to pull the vacuum line off the IWE there. And of course, if you lose vacuum down at the IWE, you got to check for leaks in the vacuum lines. However, right now I'm just going to verify in fact that we do have vacuum there. Vacuum line off, and I'm going to assume that my vacuum is going to be the larger tube. So. I have this T with a vacuum cap. I'm going to put the vacuum gauge on that, start it up, and then check the vacuum. Uh, I'm just going to plug that in. Plug that one in. So you can see right there at the hub, I am reading vacuum. So now, if I switch it to four-wheel drive, that vacuum should drop off. So there we go. We know right there the vacuum switch is operating as it should. However, let's do some voltage checks now. So I'm going to carefully... See if I can get that electrical connection off. So now I got two wires. One's a red, one's kind of a pinkish. No volts. 14 volts on the other one, which is that one right there, the pinker one. The Ford recommends a voltage at this solenoid has to be greater than 9 volts. 
So it looks like the 4x4 module supplies the ground. It's got power all the time. Looks like it supplies the ground. So now... If I gauge four-wheel drive, it should cut out. Yeah, I just did. I just heard the beep stop. And now there's no ground. So there you have it. Provides the ground. All right, shut her down. Let's recap. What did we learn? We need to have at least minimum 10 inches of vacuum. That's coming from the manifold vacuum line to the solenoid switch. You need to verify that. If you got vacuum all the way to the switch, check vacuum at the lines down to your vacuum hubs. If you don't have the same vacuum, if the vacuum is less, you need to start checking over the lines, looking for abrasions, looking for somewhere that could possibly be a leak. Now, if you got vacuum down at the hubs, but you put it in four wheel drive and it doesn't engage, that's where I did the power test. Now, as you guys saw, the one pin is gonna have power full time. The four x four module provides the ground. If you're not getting that ground, your hubs are not going to engage. And then, if that doesn't happen, if the problem isn't the switch, that's something that I could troubleshoot more in depth afterwards. I just want to keep this with the IWE switch, solenoid switch for the vacuum. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. On the next video, I'm going to go over checking your hubs to verify that they are indeed working, what to look for, everything else. So I hope you guys enjoyed this series, and I'll see you guys in the next video.